It's been two long years since the release of Ginger Island. Along with the update, it brought all sorts of new items, great new music, and of course new rings and something called The Forge. With that said, I asked my community what kind of videos they would want, and the ring topic kept popping up. So here I am, two years later. What can I say? I'm a little bit of a procrastinator. So it turns out, there's 30 rings in the game. And because there are so many, I've decided to only talk about 28 of them. And we're going to start our journey together in the regular mines. The small glow ring is one of the first rings you'll find in the game. And it's not really a bad ring per se, but it definitely has the worst light radius in the game. But with that said, it's still good at what it does. It just acts as a light bulb and it's good for the dark floors and you know, night. Speaking of night, the glow ring serves as a giant beacon of light and you can sufficiently find ladders in the dark parts of the mines. It's literally two times better in light radius and effectively makes you the human torch without any of their powers. The small magnet ring acts, well, like a magnet and will bring items directly to you so you don't have to run to them to pick them up. But because it's the small version, it only has one magnet tile, which is the lowest in the game. But hey, it beats no magnet tile, am I right? The magnet ring is the bigger version and offers two magnet tiles. While I have no idea what magnet tile means, I do know that the magnet ring does work pretty well, and I usually wear two types of these rings to make life a little bit easier. The immunity ring is such an interesting ring, because prior to patch 1.5, it only worked with the Shadow Shaman debuff, because it was meant to block only projectile debuffs, but it got reworked to include all debuffs. So with every single point of immunity, it grants an additive 10% chance to block debuffs. If you manage to get 10 immunity or higher, you will be fully immune to every pesky debuff in the game. Now that we've leveled up from the regular mines, let's move on to more exciting rings. The Crafted Rings. I overlooked this ring when I first started playing Stardew Valley, but eventually I opened my eyes to it. This ring is such an efficient budget item, it's easily top tier. It's effectively a glow ring combined with a magnet ring, and you can wear two of them, which is like wearing four rings. Plus, it's relatively easy to make. You just need some iron bars and solar essence. I rely pretty heavily on this ring when I do challenge runs. The sturdy ring is one of the earliest rings you can get, so expectations are pretty low, but somehow this ring manages to drop the ball. The materials required to make this abomination are far too high. Two copper bars seems pretty reasonable, but the 25 slime and 25 bug meat seems way too high to me. I'm not a huge fan of being slimed, but by the time I have the materials for this ring, I've already gotten other rings I would rather use. The only reason I would ever make this ring is for perfection files. The warrior ring is a cool concept, but by the time the buff procs, I feel like the battle's already done, and I'm just standing there like a barbarian, ready for a fight that's already ended. It doesn't seem like a bad ring by any means, but I think it would be more fun if the chance to proc was a little bit higher. The Ring of Yoba was a surprisingly fun ring. I figured it would just straight up be bad, but it wasn't, and it can actually proc multiple times in a row. It's based off of how low your HP is and how much luck you have, which I guess is pretty fitting. The only problem is it can backfire and just not work, which typically leads to death. I've never liked the thorns mechanic in any game, and unfortunately Stardew was no exception. I don't have much to say aside from any ring is better than no ring. Plus, I tried to kill those bugs in Skull Caverns with this ring, but it didn't work. It's widely accepted that the Iridium Band is one of the best rings in the game. I have to agree, because it combines the effects of three separate rings into one. So if you're wearing two of these bad boys, you'd basically be wearing six rings. Not only does it win in pure efficiency, but the stats it gives are just so effective. It might be expensive to craft, but they always feel worth it. When you unlock the guild by doing the initiation quest, you can immediately purchase any of these rings by talking to Marlin. Most of these rings are pretty decent as well. The Amethyst Ring is a unique ring that exists solely to push enemies away from you with its knockback stat. So if you're a lover and not a fighter, this ring could be good for you. The Aquamarine Ring is a bit deceptive, or at least I think it is, because it says 10% crit chance, but that's not a flat 10% crit chance. Instead, it's based off of the weapon you're using. This can still be good though, with the scout skill and other crit chance rings, uh, plus a dagger. The emerald ring can actually be pretty useful. If you feel like you're swinging too slowly, this can potentially offset the swinging with a club, or just making your sword swing faster overall. The idea of having a massive amount of crit damage but no crit chance reminds me of Pokemon. It's kind of like when your Zapdos uses thunder, but it misses so it doesn't do any damage. That's kind of what it's like in this game when you wear a crit damage ring, but you don't crit. It just feels like a wasted ring slot. With that said, it's not a bad ring by any means, but I feel like I just never crit in the early game. The ruby ring is probably my favorite of the viable rings, because it's a consistent 10% attack increase. So it will always increase the damage done based on your weapon. For example, a 10% attack increase should raise the minimum damage of the infinity blade by 8 and the maximum by 10. If you think about it, that's just free damage. If anyone knows the purpose for this ring, please leave a comment saying what it's for. 
After 3100 hours of playing Stardew, I still have no idea. Let's move on to some of the best rings in the game, which can only be obtained by Monster Slayer goals. It may seem discouraging at first, but trust me when I say, these rings are game changing. Plus with the addition of Monster Musk in the most recent patch, it makes things a lot easier. The Crown Jewel of Rings, otherwise known as the Burglar's Ring. This ring is incredibly powerful because it rolls an enemy's loot table twice when they're defeated. This allows for the chance to get some serious coal from dust sprites, or even iridium ore and batteries from the deep dark depths of the Skull Caverns. The Crabshell Ring is one of the best defensive rings out there. It gives you a flat 5 defense, which means it effectively blocks out 5 damage. This stacks additively with other defensive items, like boots, weapons, or buffs you may have. I really like this ring because it synergizes really well with my ability to just take hits to the face all the time. If you're finding enemies in Skull Caverns of the Volcano hitting way too hard, it might be time to invest into some defensive gear, starting with the Crab Shell Ring. The Napalm Ring is one of the most fun rings to use. It causes an explosion on enemy deaths, which can blow up surrounding rocks as well as splash some damage to nearby frenemies. It also does zero damage to you, which is pretty cool. However, it can be kind of annoying to rely on as a substitute for a bomb, and some of the enemies tend to just kind of fly away when you're trying to use them to blow up a specific spot. Overall, it's a pretty fun ring. Another ring I vastly underestimated. The Savage Ring is all about speed. When you kill an enemy, it gives you a temporary plus two speed boost for three seconds. This stacks with food and drink buffs as well. It turns out running really fast is a massive time saver for going deep in Skull Caverns. Plus, when you're going really fast, you can easily dodge enemy attacks and their abilities. While you're ducking and diving, you can quickly maneuver to gems and iridium nodes, or even just bolt it to the next ladder or shaft. Thanks, Savage Ring. The Slime Charmer Ring is for sure a fan favorite. What's not to like about ignoring all damage and all slowing effects from those silly slime guys? I'll be honest, it usually ruins my day when one of these little guys punches me and slows me at the same time. With that said, I don't really use this ring since my immunity is fairly high from the genie or mermaid boots, and I'm not really afraid of the damage that they can do. One downside of the ring is that the grind to get it can be kinda long, but ultimately it's a good ring and I can definitely see its potential uses. The vampire ring offers 2 HP per kill, which isn't that much, but if you use two separate vampire rings, it now moves up to 4 HP per kill, which can be pretty good if you can find and kill a large group of slimes. I'm not the biggest fan of this ring because everything later in the game tends to hit pretty hard. With all that said though, it's still a pretty good choice for scenarios like Key's Hungry Challenge, or when you're in the remix mines and get nauseated by a ghost, or maybe you just like him and want to have some fun. We finally made it to the dreaded Skull Caverns, and there are surprisingly only two rings found within. We've already covered the immunity ban, so let's move on to the other one. Hotly contested is one of the best rings in the game, the lucky ring lives to that hype. It's essentially a ring that just gives you free stuff. It increases the likelihood of getting additional crops, more wood from trees, more treasure chests from fishing, more treasure floors in the skull caverns, more gem nodes, more crates in the mines, and so much more. It even enhances your weapon's crit chance. The question shouldn't be is the lucky ring one of the best rings, it should be what can't the lucky ring do? Well, it does have one downside. It's pretty difficult to obtain in the skull caverns, but that can be remedied by panning. It's pretty much the best ring in the game. Oh, and uh, the luck stat stacks with food and drink buffs. Last but not least is the volcano dungeon. This area of the game can be pretty brutal, but the rings and rewards within are well worth it. And the music's also really good. The hot java ring is such a nice addition to the game. Not only does it fuel a caffeine addiction, but on top of that, it also gives speed. The earlier you get this ring, the better, because you can start to accumulate your vast empire of coffee, which you can use or you can sell. It's also considered a drink buff, which stacks with food and other ring buffs. Overall, it's a very nice quality of life ring. The protection ring is such a cool design. When you get hit and your character is flashing, that means you're briefly invincible. Normally, that short invincibility only lasts for 1.2 seconds, which seems kind of bad, right? Well, with the protection ring, that invincibility goes up to 1.6 seconds. With two protection rings, that goes up to two whole seconds of invincibility. I'm probably the only fan of this ring, but it's such a good and fun ring to use that I think I'm okay with spreading awareness of the distinguished protection ring. The soul sapper ring is much like the vampire ring, but it will return four energy per kill instead of health. I don't think I've ever used this ring, and I don't think I will, because when I adventure into the volcano or skull caverns, I typically bring a lot of food and my trusty slingshot, so energy is rarely a problem. I can't really see a reason to use this ring, which is a shame because it's one of the coolest looking designs. The Phoenix Ring lives to its name, because if your HP drops to zero, the ring activates and will bring you back to life, but it only works once a day. It also doesn't stack with itself, so you can't wear two and have two additional lives. One gripe I have about this ring is that when it activates, it happens really fast and it's kind of hard to tell. 
It would be a lot nicer if the game had a dialog box or something to pause the game to indicate to the player that it did work and give them a moment to breathe. Okay, so we covered 28 of the 30 rings in the game as quickly as possible. Now it's time to talk about the forge. When you make the great adventure to the tippity top of the volcano, you come across this lava fueled machine known as the forge. When you insert two rings and 20 cinder shards, it will combine both of the rings and their effects into a single combined ring. This allows for some insanely fun game enhancing combinations, so let's talk about my favorite ring combinations. Oh, one last thing, you also can't mix two rings together that have the same name. Like, for example, you can't mix an iridium band with another iridium band. Starting in the top left is my all-time favorite combination of rings, which are the iridium band and lucky ring. I actually wear two sets of these combined rings because it's useful everywhere in the game. The luck from the combined ring enhances weapon crit chance, fishing chests, more wood, more gem nodes, more… Uh, you get the idea. The reason for the iridium band is essentially it's just an all-around great ring that offers weapon damage and ice light and some magnet radius. And since I wear two sets of these rings, I get the double the bonus. I consider this combination the ATV of rings because it's good for pretty much every scenario. Going to the bottom left is the Savage and Bergy ring. This ring is solely for combat, and when I delve the depths of Skull Caverns, I will switch out one of my rings for the combined Savage and Burglar ring, because it gives me a quick burst of speed and a chance for more items. I typically use this ring for challenge runs, otherwise I'm too lazy to switch. Moving to the top right, another one of my favorite pairings is the Burgly ring and the Java ring, which is another combat-only ring. The extra drops of items and coffee are pretty appealing to me. I guess I just like to be efficient. In the bottom right is my other all-time favorite combination of rings, which are the magnet ring and the glowstone ring. This combination is super niche and it's pretty much only used when you want a massive magnet radius the size of your screen, which is pretty rare, but it's so cool to watch everything gravitate to you without having to move. I typically only use this ring for super deep skull cavern dives. I was instructed to talk about potential other ring combinations other than my super boring double pairings of the same rings, so I tried out some other fun ideas that I think work well. Starting top left, if you find the enemies in the skull cavern hitting too hard, I would give the crab shell ring and protection ring a try. The sole purpose of this ring combination is survival, and since both rings synergize really well with defense, this should keep you alive a lot longer when adventuring in the volcano dungeon or skull caverns. In the bottom left is probably the most high risk, high reward ring combination out there. The ring of Yoba and Phoenix Ring work really well together in the sense that they both function when you get low health. The idea is that the Ring of Yoba can potentially save you from death multiple times, but if that doesn't work then the failsafe of the Phoenix Ring will activate and save the day. Unfortunately the failsafe only works once a day, so if you're feeling brave then give this combination a try. In the top right is the Slime Charmer and Vampire Ring combination. Slimes are pretty annoying, but usually there's a lot of them, so my thought process is there's lots of slimes, which equals lots of health with the vampire ring. It can be pretty fun running around with the monster musk in these rings. Just note that other enemies tend to still hit pretty hard. Last but not least is the iridium band and napalm ring. The one thing I disliked about the napalm ring is that it can be unreliable to kill enemies on a specific spot but with the help of the Iridium Band, that does alleviate some of the pain. The Iridium Band also has Magnet Radius on it, so when you blow stuff up, it'll collect it as well. As much as I want to cover every possible ring combination in the game, I don't think I have the time. So with that said, hopefully you find this video somewhat helpful, and for sure feel free to drop a comment telling me I'm wrong or what rings you like to use. Thanks for watching guys, and uh, I'll see you in two years.